Welcome to Corona Stories from Observing the Process. I'm your host, Alex Greenberg. And before we start, I'm hoping you can help me out by supporting the show. You can do this by going to my website, observingtheprocess.com. For just $5 a month or $50 for the year, you can become a monthly supporter. This show relies on listener support to stay on the air. So if you find this content valuable, I hope you will consider subscribing. You can find a link to subscribe in the description of this podcast. If you can't support monthly, no worries. You can help out by rating and reviewing on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. You can share it with your friends, you can blog about it, or discuss it on your own podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you for supporting the show. Listeners like you make it possible. If you are looking for information on how to protect yourself and stay safe from COVID-19, please get information from the CDC or the World Health Organization. Today on the show, I had Johnny Tang. Johnny is a skater who is based in Shanghai, but is from Canada. Please welcome Johnny Tang. In the land of China, people hardly got nothing at all. No possessions? And in China, they never go to church. No religion, too? I do magic. Well, it's easy if you try, Dick. Yo, Johnny, what's up? Yo, I was good. Chilling. Um, I've seen you've been skating that new park a lot. Is that like um, what's the? It's like it has a basketball court and stuff like that on it. Yeah, it's just the homies, the ZZY, and a few of the homies. They uh, started, I guess, like a little, like uh, what's it called, like an agency over there. It's like this new area of Shanghai, and. Uh, What's up with it? Oh, yeah. And some rich dude invested hella money into it. There's a sneaker store, a burger shop, a skate park. And they're going to start up, like, I think a bar, like, in between. And their offices are upstairs. It's pretty dope. The skate park's super fun. It's got, like, you know, it's the size of, like, a like a small basketball court. Mm. And it's uh, super fun. Yeah, man. It looks like... Um... You and Clyber and a bunch of dudes have kind of been stacking clips, and um, there was like one edit I guess you put out recently that was seemed like really well done. It was yeah, like it's a, all right. like the, a commercial or something. Coping. No, no, the, like the video. Oh, um, I guess so. Yeah, um, but the ramps they're all like pretty solid and stuff like that, or they're all right. Like because uh, it's I think it's uh, wood on top, so it's like starting to fucking what's it called? What's it? It's starting warp. to warp. Or oh, whatever wow. in some spots, but it's still like pretty solid. Mm. It's like super fun to just go there and fuck around on, and it's like it's caged in, so nobody's allowed in. Oh, uh, so that right. keeps the corona out. Yeah, <laughs> keeps the corona out. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, speaking of corona, I mean that's the talk to- topic of conversation these days. Um, I guess we could start off with like introduce yourself a little bit, who you are, where you're based, what you do, that kind of stuff. All right. Uh, my name is. Johnny, Johnny Tang. Uh, I'm. I was b- originally born and raised in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and I've been living in China for I guess the past 16, 17 years. Mm. I lived in uh, Beijing for four and a half years, Guangzhou for like six months, and uh, Shanghai for a bunch of years. But yeah. Uh, oh yeah, and I, I skateboard. <laughs> yeah, I think that's important note. Pro skateboarder in China. <laughs> no, hell no. Not pro. Just a skater. Just, just a skater. skater. All yeah. right. All right. All right. Keep it 100. Um, when did you first hear about the coronavirus? Fuck, man. I don't even know. I, I guess I guess I must have heard it from like a girlfriend or something. Like my girlfriend, she must have like brought it up to me. She's mm. like, oh, this shit's serious and blah, blah, this, blah, blah. And I was like, really? The flu. Like I've never had the flu. Mm-hmm. I don't think I have. Well, I didn't think I have the flu until later on, actually. So um, I wasn't really worried. But like, and then more and more people like skaters and stuff like that were talking about it. And then my my real good homie, Jeff, like he's following all the Chinese social media and all the news that's going on. And he hit me up. He's like, yo, it's fucking serious. You, like, don't go outside, don't touch anything, mm. uh, buy food, buy masks, disinfectant, and this and that, this and that. I was like, really? Like, you guys are overreacting, aren't you? 
Mm. And uh, he came over to my he came over to my apartment and he dropped off a bunch of like dope masks. And I was like, wow, this is kind of serious, huh? And uh, yeah, and it, it got real when I was going out to skate and taking the metro and it was like completely empty. Like everything was empty and every single person had a mask on. And that's when I was like, oh shit, this is like real serious. Mm. Um, yeah. And where was I also? Oh yeah. And, and then I had to go make a trip out to Guangzhou to, to Hong Kong actually, but I detoured in Guangzhou because I had to do a visa run mm. and, uh, my family, like usually in the wintertime, like I'll head down to Guangzhou and kick it there for like two months, Yeah, yeah. you know, wait for the weather and everything to pass. And then I'll make my way back to Shanghai. And then, so I made a visa, a visa run to Hong Kong real quick, came back the next day to Guangzhou and my family was like, oh, we really don't, you like, you shouldn't go out because it's, um, it's not safe, you, you know? And I was kind of thinking like, yeah, that'd be a dick move. Yeah, like really selfish of me if I started just going out whenever I wanted to and then coming home and my grandma was there as well. So I don't want to bring some bullshit back to the family. Mm. And then I was like, oh, man, this kind of this is kind of sucky. Like, I, I think I'm just going to go back to Shanghai if if I'm going to like quarantine or whatever, if I'm going to if I'm going to be bored, like I might as well just be bored at home. Mm. What I so, found interesting uh, about what you were talking about is like you actually found out about it through, you know, real world experience here in America, you know, it's almost like the media is the more crazy experience here. Just experiencing like constant 24 seven bombardment of information. While for you, it actually took you being in the Metro, um, dealing with, you know, daily life. Maybe you could, um, talk about that and like other daily life experiences in China that were, um, something that uh, Americans or people all over the world don't really understand. Yeah. So like over here, I didn't really, I didn't really get it because, uh, like I, I didn't really understand what was going on because there was, there was obviously there's social media here, but I couldn't read it. Mm, oh, like right. You don't read, read the characters. I couldn't understand. So I, I was like, I wasn't freaking out. Mm. Uh, it wasn't until like, yeah, just taking the Metro, not seeing anybody and pe people telling me not to take the Metro because that's like, you know, there's no airflow. Uh, there's going to be a lot of people uh, taking it. And at, 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 it was like, a few, I would say like 95% of the people were wearing face masks, but then there was like another 5% that w weren't wearing face masks mm. just because. I th like, and those were old people too, because those old people just don't give a fuck. <laughs> like they, like they, they honestly, like they don't care. Like they don't know what's going on. They don't, they don't fuck with social media, right? But every you know, young person, like fifties and under, anybody who knows how to like use a cell phone, they all had their masks on. Mm. So, um, anyways, it was during the Chinese New Year's as well. So, oh, this like, is important. Everything yeah. was, Chinese New Year was yeah, a big so part of it. Was, yeah, 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 like. Uh, the the city was already pretty empty, but usually during the Chinese New Year's here, it's like you know hustle and bustle. Like people are enjoying their free time, so you would see people at the malls. Uh, normally, you would see people like um, what, what's it called, like window shopping and stuff like that. Yeah. But during this time, it was just completely dead. It like the street. I was kind of worried. Like oh shit. Like I didn't. I didn't stock up on anything. I'm kind of, I'm kind of like, I'm kind of fucked if, if nothing's open mm. and if how, if how serious things were going to be over here. But, um, avocado lady, which is just down the street. She was open the entire time. Wow. And the craziest thing was, yeah. There, so there's a lot of foreigners going in and out of people. And also a lot of like Chinese locals because there wasn't many stores that was open and she was pretty much the only one that was open. And man, them motherfuckers didn't even wear no face masks. They were like exposed. <laughs> avocado lady, like for people who don't know, Avocado Lady is um, um, mostly a foreigner expat store where a lot of um, like import goods are sold. And this lady, Avocado Lady, I she wasn't wearing masks. No, none of the staff in there were wearing wow. masks. Just but everybody it. going in, yeah, everybody going in was kind of wearing masks, I guess. But, uh, yeah, she, they, she, I, and they were like making fun of it. Actually. I was mm. like, yo, y'all like, 
y'all brave. And he's like, hey, like, I'm not afraid of anything. This this virus is nothing to me and blah, blah, blah. And I'm huh. like, bro, like, I just don't cough on me. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You know what else got me thinking? Um, so I don't I don't think you were there during SARS, but may, do you have do you remember when that was going on? I, well, I remember when I was younger, like I, I remember hearing about it, but I don't think it like I'm pretty sure like in Toronto is it was a uh, really serious, hmm. but, uh, I mean, I just took that opportunity to go skating with my friends. There was like, nobody was, there's no security. There was nothing. The streets were completely empty. Hmm. I think, um, I think the Metro and buses were still running. Like public transportation was still running. So me and the homies or the homies and I, we would just go skating all the time. And that was dope. And you're talking <laughs> about in Canada. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I right. wasn't. Uh, that was like 2002, so I didn't come here. I guess until 2003 or four. Right, it was pretty mellow. Because in, I guess you got Toronto, here right after it happened. And you're, you're you're getting me thinking about. It'd be really interesting to talk to someone who went through SARS and this just to kind of compare. Because I know it was something similar, like in China, people, you know, everyone wearing face masks and, um, you know, just like uncertainty in the air. People just scared, man. Just mm. like people here are just hella scared. Like Chinese people are, are they aren't they're not like rebellious or whatever. What I've noticed, come like if 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 I was in Canada or in the US and comparing it to being in Shanghai, it's that when this thing happened, people were obedient. Mm. Like I, I don't mean obedient as in like whatever, whatever, but they were like everybody worked as everybody in this city worked as a team and like, okay, we're all quarantining and we're all going to wear face masks and we're all going to, I guess, like hygiene. Or I, I guess I wouldn't say all, but like, you know, during the Chinese New Year's, there was a lot of people gone, but like all the Shanghai people that were, or everybody that was still in Shanghai, like they were pretty serious about it. And mm. nobody was taking those risks being like, oh, this isn't going to affect me. This is a joke. Like, but I feel like in North America, like, there's a lot of people that would do that mm. just yeah. because they're a little bit more rebellious. Um, you know, they're, they're, you know, yeah, this I is, think. um, this is something that you actually inspired for all of my guests. I'm going to be asking, um, cause we talked about this before a little bit and it, the basic question is like how different cultures are handling this pandemic. So you, you kind of already touched on it and basically how, like, for example, you're in a unique situation where you understand the, the Chinese culture cause you've been there for so long and you understand North American culture, like you're from Canada and have experience in the States. So I, I do think that's super interesting that you know, you use the word obedient and that, that doesn't like generally sound like a good thing, but I totally understand what you're saying. It's more just like, we're all in this together. We're going to, we're going to like kind of make sure we can do everything we can to get through this. And I think that's an underlying theme of, um, just China in general is, you know, people don't think of themselves as individuals as much as we do in America, but in China, you're thinking about like the greater sum of the people. Um, what do you think? I mean, I, I actually think that people, if you're in a good crew, like if you're in a crew, then it's like family. We eat together. We, we laugh together. We chill together mm. uh, and we share, you know, everything. So that's if you're like in a crew. But if you're talking about just people in general, I think it's a little bit more like, oh, I'll keep to myself kind of thingy mm. um, in, in, here in China. But during this whole pandemic or whatever, uh, I really got the sense like oh everybody's like you know on point with this one everybody just wanted this to end right. and uh be safe and um yeah it's yeah like this one th th uh, i definitely saw like a different part of uh you know people when mm. during this whole during this whole thing uh, one thing I have to ask you about, you may not have the the best answer because I know you don't read um, characters, but Li Wenliang, do you remember him being in the news much? Yeah, he's like the whisperer guy, right? The, the guy who like kind of, uh, dude, my English is so shit living here, man. I need to like, I need to like go to go back to school or some shit. But, like I'm replacing normal words with swearing words and like making this huge circle around just to find, just to like explain something. Anyways. Uh, yeah, I heard about him, but you know, like I, fuck, I didn't know the dude or anything, but mm. yeah, I guess like the whole whistleblowing kind of thing. He was, the, he was like the first guy to, uh, to, to, 
to find out about this this COVID nineteen mm. thing, and then yeah, nobody took them serious, especially the authorities, and yeah, yeah they kind of fucked up on that one. Yeah. yeah, the craziest thing was I heard there was like in Wuhan, so the the outbreak and everything was already ha- like Li Wen Liang find out, found out about the outbreak mm. or found out about this new flu influenza whatever. And then he kind of reported it. They were like, man, like, don't spread rumors, blah, blah, blah. And then they had this huge, like, st- more than 10,000 people, uh, like, dinner gathering, which kind of blew my mind. It mm. was like a, it was like a, um, what is it called? It was like uh, a Chinese New Year's celebration dinner kind of thing, mm. but with, like, the citizens. And I think that kind of fucked up. <laughs> like, yeah, I didn't know. Man, I didn't that, hear about that. really fucked up. That sounds wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I heard that. I, well, I heard that from like the locals here, like people just kind of explaining shit to me. And yeah, imagine like, like the flu going on, and then you going to like a Chinese New Year's in Times Square kind of thing. <laughs> oh my god, like, that would be or, like New Year's Eve <laughs> and Times Square is like that's what it was like. Yeah, but everybody's eating and sharing food, and this oh, yeah. I think yeah, I think that's what what kind of blew it up a little bit. <laughs> huh. Okay, as we as we start but to kind of man, it's it's super real out there. It, Wuhan got hit hard. Um, so my girl, she has a bunch of coworkers that are from Wuhan. So oh, they really? all like they work in Shanghai, but they all went back. They all went back to Wuhan for Chinese New Year's, and my girlfriend's like super. Weird. I I've seen her like three times since like in like three months because she's so paranoid about the shit because she lives with her parents, mm. so she doesn't want to bring anything home to them, but um. Uh, she was telling me like, oh, you should really take this serious and blah, blah. I'm like, oh, whatever. You know, I wash my hands. I've never had the flu before. Um, uh, I'm not being an idiot, but like, yeah, I, I do go out and skate every day, um, which is kind of dumb. And I just like, I, I wasn't taking Metro at the beginning, but I'm starting to now. Mm. Uh, but yeah, she was like hella worried. And then she was talking to her coworkers and they're like, yeah, like, he's not going to take it serious until something bad happens because her coworkers have like friends and family that are just, you know, they're just dying. They're, like, they're passing away like in their homes because there's, because there's no medical assistance that they can get to because all the hospitals and everything are just packed. It's like overwhelming. Hmm. And, and uh, do you stay in touch with yeah. any of these people in Wuhan or, or no, I know actually, you don't personally, so, but so your, your girlfriend. St- uh, well, she's, she, she works together with them. So she, she's, she tells me more, uh, she, she knows more than I do about that stuff mm. about like personal kind of, uh, things. But yeah, she was just telling me like, you should really take this seriously because this shit's really happening in Wuhan right now. Uh, and she was telling me about how her coworkers are like losing friends and this and that, this and that. And, uh, what else was there? Oh yeah. So I have a bunch of skater friends that are from Wuhan, but because they're on the Olympic China team mm. or whatever it is. And they were at like, they were in Thailand during this whole ordeal and they couldn't even go back to, to Wuhan because right. like all, all the, that was happening. So they ended up staying there for like two, three months. <laughs> That's kind of dope. <laughs> Get to That's ride out dope. this whole thing in, in like tropical Thailand. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, like even, slowly asia kind of got like gnarly and gnarlier people started getting it in thailand and this and that so when they came back they had to quarantine themselves in uh actually he didn't even go back to wuhan he went down he went to the south Mm. to the hainan island and he had to get quarantined just because you know he was coming from overseas or whatever yeah it's funny how the the script has been flipped now like everyone going into china is being quarantined because they're actually one of the better places in the world currently as of what is this like March 20, 22nd right now we're talking or 23rd. Um, yeah. yeah. Pretty interesting how that's happening. Like, you know, I, I know Ben I mean, is quarantined right now in Chengdu. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're like, dude, China moved quick when, when shit started really popping and you know, all this shit was really, really going down when pe- more and more people were understanding what was happening boom like shanghai places shut down mm. um let's say shopping malls had uh what's it called like uh heat, heat sensors i guess what they are so it's like 
you walk into the mall, there's a TV that shows your temperature. Cause if you're the Metro everywhere, everywhere has, has people checking your temperature. So if you're a little bit over, then it's like, boom, you're like, you're, you're going in the paddy wagon and you can wow. take it to some quarantine. Yeah, dude, it's not it's so scary. I, I was going in the Metro. Yeah. I was going in the Metro. I'm like, Oh, so like I asked the security guy, I'm like, uh, what happens if, you know, like if I'm over the normal temperature or whatever, and he's like, oh, you just wait here for a car to come pick you up. I was like, damn, <laughs> oh <my laughs> like God. that would suck. Every yeah. time I kind of take it, you know, you know, when you're skating and then you're kind of like hot or whatever, you're sweaty and then oh. you kind of jump on the metro. You're like, ugh, like that would kind of suck if you got like a wrong reading or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many times that's happened or just like, you know, some people generally like have an average higher or an average lower temperature, you know, not everyone is the same, but I, I guess they would take that into account. Yeah. But yeah, the entire city was pretty on point. Like, um, I, I hear the city's kind of starting to come back to life. Um, how long was it? And what was more of the experience? Like you, like you mentioned, the the malls are closed, you know, restaurants were closed. I, I'm going to be talking to Camden soon and, you know, she owns multiple restaurants. So definitely interested to hear Ooh, her perspective. Yeah, because they were just fully closed. Like you weren't allowed to do anything, like maybe takeout. But what was your experience like? Were you doing more shopping? You're, you know, I know you're spending more time at home, but um, yeah, just a little bit more about the city and like a little bit after Chinese New Year when it was like supposed to get started back up? I'm just curious about that. So restaurants, a lot of, a lot of local Chinese restaurants are still closed. Um, and like oh, a lot of Western, okay, so let me, uh, let me bring this back. I'm like all mixed up right now. So boom, when this should happen, everything was closed except mm-hmm. for Avocado Lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it was like, it was literally like, a month and a little bit of just straight cooking. It was just like nothing. You're just cooking at home. What about all grocery the time. stores? Avocado lady. That's it. There, That's like it. city super was not open. Nothing. None of that. I mean, mall. I think the malls were like completely shut down. Wow. For, for a minute. I don't, I don't know exactly how long because I wasn't really going to them. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think it wasn't like after like a month or a month and a half or maybe even two months when I, was going to the malls just because everything was closed. Literally, mm-hmm. literally everything was closed. You, you would even see stores that like Katina Agave, like packed up their shit and just bounced. Like wow. they're out of business now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think they just knew like, damn, like this was put, this they put a lot of businesses out of business or put a lot of businesses like out. Is Kante, out. Are you saying Kante is like fully done? Like they, they're not even open now. They're, they're shutting down operations. Dude, they're like, they're, there's nothing. There's a lot of stores in Shanghai that used to be there that are, that are now all gone. Like they just tore tore all their equipment, all their shit out, and just like packed up and left. Oh man, that's new I to me. Actually, I didn't know that. Just, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that it just affected them. They they knew it was going to affect them that bad. Mm. Um, what else? Yeah, and then once I started seeing people like go in and out of malls, oh, and oh, because there was like. The, the temperature checks and things were like being checked more, more hardcore, I guess. Then things started opening up, but there's still a lot of restaurants that are still closed. Mm. Uh, now we, every restaurant that you go into, it's uh, there's hand sanitizer. Somebody greets you with like a thermometer gun to your face. Oh my God. Um, uh, what else is there? Not met like, places that are normally packed are not packed. Mm. Um, you're not allowed to sit in big groups. So there, like, there's like a distancing kind of thing still going on right now. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck is that noise? Dude, you have like a, like a missile happening or something. In Dude. Oh man. I'm saying? bummed. You guys can hear that. All right. Yeah. That's the, it's the fire. It's like, it went off at 1144. Now it's 12 o'clock. It's going off again. This is a uh, real life experiences. Okay. <laughs> it's like, it's just like, uh, the, I don't know how to like the firehouse, you know, makes it go off at noon. <laughs> Oh, okay. I thought it was like uh, some sort of missile crisis or some shit going oh, on yeah. there, wherever you are. <laughs> you see those memes that are out like, you know, uh, January, World War III, February, Kobe died. March is like coronavirus. <laughs> Next up is like Dude. Meteor. <laughs> Yo, some shit is happening. Like something is happening. Something big is going to happen. Yeah, something man. big is going to happen. I mean, like, 2020 has not been know. our year. <laughs> Dude, like, first, uh, for, uh, like, I haven't really, 
I've been talking to a few people about this kind of shit and they, they've been like throwing some conspiracy shit at me. And I'm just like, I don't really believe in conspiracy. I kind of just, you know, live life day by day and whatever mm-hmm. happens kind of happens. Obviously, this year has been really fucked up. But uh, yeah, people have been hitting me up about like, yo, you should check this out. And I'll, I'll just watch it just because how bored I am. Mm. And uh, yeah, man, this shit's fucked up. <laughs> I forgot what I want. Wade. So like Wade Desarmo, he hit me up and he was, he's like, yo, you this fake virus. I'm like, yeah. What? I don't know, man. He's I, calling it fake. Like I, I'm like, yeah, man, this is kind of like crazy how it just affects like, obviously like older people. And this could totally be man-made and started talking about how how this is like population control and this and that, this and that. And he's like, check this video. I'll check. I'll, I'll, I forgot what it's called, but I'll hit you up and let you know. Mm. But I started watching it and I was like, holy fuck, like this is too gnarly. This is too deep. This is too deep. <laughs> and it started talking about how 2020 is going to be the year where the world kind of like resets and stuff like that. I don't know. It's crazy. Like this, the, all this shit that's happening right now is like for a reason kind of mm. thing. And I'm just, ugh. yeah, it's... I don't know if I believe it or not, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, in my opinion, <laughs> it's it's fun for entertainment a little bit. I think it's very easy to make stuff seem very legit on YouTube with like good editing and all that stuff. But um, I mean, to yeah. each his own. I personally just in getting my information from the World Health Organization, the CDC, um, anything that you were just talking about, I think is entertaining, but everyone's allowed to look into whatever they want. <laughs> Wade Disarma, though. That's so funny. You're just dropping that name. Like, Oh, I'll just hit you up. Dude, living day by day. That's all I'm doing. But, yeah, buddy. Yeah. There's some crazy shit that people are making out there and it's, yeah, it's crazy. Mm. So as crazy. we start to wrap up, I'm just kind of curious, what do you think the future will hold for um, Shanghai? And even yourself, has this made you reconsider whether you want to stay in China or Shanghai? Fuck man. I mean, it's just, right now it's super difficult to go anywhere i have so i i need to go my visa doesn't let me allow me to stay in china very long and like this virus is kind of fucking with me uh with my visa mm. uh, luckily the chinese government here gave every foreigner a 60 day automatic um extension which was fucking so good oh that's like, awesome thank you yeah yeah, I didn't yeah. Know that. so just people who are yeah, but just because they don't want people traveling and coming back in and coming back out, and, mm. you know, just take, yeah, it's, it's just like, it just makes sense. Yeah. What, uh, with that new rule or whatever it is, right? Um, what else is there? What were we talking about? I'm dumb. Just kind of um, your thoughts on the future for yourself and oh, yeah, um, yeah. this whole topic. So, this whole... I mean, I really hope that people out there don't think that this is, don't like, you know, listen to, shit that people say and say like oh this is this is a chinese virus or whatever Mm. but fuck man like nobody wanted this i mean money and greed and people did this right so we're fucking we're kind of fucking with nature and this is like it's this is it's what it's returning to us Mm. you know and unfortunately it happened here in china um but i hope that the world doesn't think that this is a a Chinese thing. And hopefully, like, you know, I've been hearing a lot of things back home where uh, people are kind of being a little bit more racist towards Asians in general. But I don't know, man, fuck. Like, I hope that does. I hope this kind of shit doesn't affect like we're all in this together and uh, the shit's real. And uh, yeah, I hope everybody has like, good health and nobody gets this shit because it sucks Mm. i don't know anybody personally but i hope nobody gets it and uh really just just wash your hands um don't go out and party don't be a dick the shit is real Mm. and uh yeah and just be very be thoughtful of others um i mean if you guys can wear a mask uh definitely wear a mask when you go out because that'll help a lot i think that's how China kind of put it under control a lot is because everybody has their masks on. Right. Um, Were you getting government issued masks? Did that happen? Or like, how did you get masks? Man, I've just been fucking reusing masks. Yeah. So I, at first I was kind of, I was like, damn, I have, I have like five masks. How is this going to work? And then, uh, so heat actually kills the virus. So I have an external heater 
Mm. And I just put my masks on top of that after using them after like the day or whatever. I'll spray them, spray them down with like a little bit of alcohol mm -hmm. and then I'll put them on the heater and then boom, it's like fresh. Yeah. Mm. It's like super fresh. Right on. And, yeah. and uh, the stuff you were talking about, about, um, you know, racism back home, I think that's pretty interesting. Like you, do you talk to your brother who's been in, in Canada? Is that right? Or. Yeah, just like shit that I've been seeing on the news and my little brother and Morgan, like Morgan Smith hit me up. He's like, yeah, man, like people aren't eating at Chinese restaurants anymore. And like, I've heard people be like getting uh, racially slurred at on the metro and stuff. Mm. I'm just like, what? That's fucking lame. That's so lame. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Really um, I mean, it's uh, it sucks. It sucks. Yeah, man. Uh, but, the only thing we could do is take it day by day. Uh, Johnny, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me. We, we've gone 29 minutes. Really good talk. Um, I, I hope cool. I get back to Shanghai soon. I'm hoping to get back there in mid-April to end of April, kind of like just see homies, see the friends. You know, I think it's, it's we're getting there. It's getting better day by day. Yeah, no, it's the safest here, I guess. Like, it, it feels like it's back to normal here for sure. I don't know how it is back in uh, back in North America, but I know they definitely reacted a little bit slower to to what was happening over here. But um, hope every hope this hope hope the best for everybody. Fuck. Sweet, Johnny. Thanks so much. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hope everybody uh, learned something from this fucking interview. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Two. All right. Take care, buddy. All right, dog. Talk to you and easy. Boom. That's it. Thank you so much for listening. If you found this podcast valuable, there are many ways you can support it. The best way is by going to my website, observingtheprocess.com. For just $5 a month or $50 for the year, you can become a monthly supporter. This show relies on listener support to stay on the air. So if you find this content valuable, I hope you will consider subscribing. You can find a link to subscribe in the description of this podcast. If you can't support monthly, no worries. You can help out by rating and reviewing on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen. You can share it with your friends, you can blog about it, or discuss it on your own podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, you can subscribe to my channel and like this video. Thank you for supporting the show. Listeners like you make it possible. If you are looking for information on how to protect yourself and stay safe from COVID-19, please get information from the CDC or the World Health Organization. Also, if you enjoyed the intro and outro music, it was made by my brother, Danny Greenberg. You can go and check out his beats on Apple Music, Spotify, YouTube, or SoundCloud. He goes by the name Estoric, E-S-T-O-R-I-C. All right, that's it for now. This podcast was recorded on March 23rd, 2020.